we are examining logic design uh, synthesis procedure. Um, the first, uh, the first thing that we have done already is the design procedure. So that's that frame. So we examined here. So we've got the steps here. And then we also said that in order to do the synthesis, we've got to know the memory elements inverse definition relation or the excitation table. So this is the video exists here already seen. So now in this video, what we are going to do, give an example for this procedure. So this is a serial ladder how you're going to design serial ladder, how you're going to synthesize serial ladder. We are going to examine in this frame. This is this video at the same time. Um, and then we are going to give three more examples. One of them is the modular counter. And this is 0247 counter and the sequence detector. So what I mean is this, we gave the procedure here. By using this procedure, we are going to synthesize four different uh, sequential circuits. So let's do it now step by step. Uh, move from here, uh, take it down, and open board. Now, serial ladder, what is serial area? We already know that we have done a parallel ladder before. In the parallel ladder, we had four input variables. Now, this one is different. This one is a serial ladder. How it works? It works as we do the summation operation. You see, the first, this significant, this significant bits comes to the input of a serial input, a serial circuit adder. And then we're going to get sum and a carry. And then second bits comes in. We've got to keep in mind the carry value for the first two bits. So it's going to come here. What I mean is this, when you add those, you're going to get by hand, you're going to get zero. And also you're going to get a carry zero. So in order, uh, this is when the first the significant bits comes in. So the next is going to come these two uh, bits. For these bits, I have got to keep this carry in my memory and transfer it to here. So add those up, give the sum b, sum 1 and the carry 1. So it goes like that. What it means, you're going to apply one bit at a time to the serial ladder. Not like the combinational circuit uh, parallel ladder case. That's the difference. So another thing here, we said this is going to be a sequential circuit. The information that I've got to keep in my mind is the carry of it, isn't it? I've got to keep this carry information. <coughs> so carry information <coughs> means this carry could be either 0 or 1. So that means I've got two states in my sequence detector. So that means one variable is enough. So we're going to choose this variable as a state variable, and the value is going to be 0, 1. That means carry 0. That means carry 1. So another thing that we've got to keep in, my, in our mind is the clock input. You know that sequential circuits works by clocks. So how many clocks input that I'm going to apply is easy because uh, 
for each input we must have a clock pulse if you are adding five bits length numbers so you've got to apply five clock pulses otherwise you're going to miss if you use four clock pulses you're going to miss one of the input that means it is going to be like not exist therefore you've got to pay attention to that so okay we determine now let's say these uh, two uh, numbers representation is x1 and x2 input variables and we found the present state so since we're going to get the serial letter z output is the summation of a and b so we determined now all the uh, variables that I that we need so okay let's draw now Move this up we're going to use this later on we, we must draw now state diagram. We are following this step by step, the uh, synthesis procedure. So my present state, uh, my states are going to be just two. One of them is zero state. The other one is the one state. And I am uh, representing these states by this uh, state variable y. So since I've got two input variables, so I'm going to have input 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. These are the inputs that I could apply. So in order to finish this state diagram, I'm going to consider the present state 0. Present state 0 means this. What happens at the output? I am going to transfer the information that I have here to this. Now, what is this first row here? It says if your present state is zero, so that is present state, and that's that present state. So when the input is zero, zero, what you get? Sum zero and carry is going to be zero isn't it so i'm going to transfer this information to here how we are going to so my present state is zero my next state is zero so that means you're going to come back to the same state isn't it when the input zero zero and the output is also zero so this in to input here is this two input that is the present state that is uh, dot green dot here another green dot here so the output here let me change the color the output is this and this is the output so next state is going to the information that I am going to keep in my mind is that zero my next uh, so that's the present state that's the next state let me put two so this one green node and two green nodes so I start from this present state come back to that next state so we are going to follow the other cases so for the other cases uh, let me do it uh, a bit faster now when you apply 0 1 our sum is 0 so, sorry our sum is 1 and our carry is going to be 0 so let me draw it here my next state is 0 so that's why it comes back it's to itself 0 1 input and the output is 1 when the input is 1, 0, we are going to get the same result as 1, 0. So I have, what I am going to do it, either for this input uh, or this input, my sum is this, my next state is 0. 
So what is left is this one. When you do the summation here, you're going to get zero here, and your carry is going to be one. So present carry, next carry. So that means you're changing the state. So it's going to be something like that. So input is one, one. And the output is zero, that's one, zero. And my next state is one. So that arrow tells me this is the president and that's the next state. So we examined now when the state is zero, what happens when you apply the different inputs. So what is left is this one. So you're going to consider now same thing for present state one, one, one. Present state one, you can apply zeros or zero one or one zero or one one. These are the possible inputs that you can apply while your present state is zero. So put it here. So add them up. Your sum becomes one, carry zero. Your sum is zero, carry one. Your sum is zero, carry one. Your sum is one, carry one. So that carry is going to be the next state and that's going to be small y. So that's the input, x1 and x2, and that is the sum. So let's apply it. Present state is 1. You're applying 0, 0. Your sum is 1. Your next state is 0. So present state 1, present state 1, next state 0 changing the state is now so present state one next state zero is going to be an arrow like that when this happens when the input zero zero and my output is one here so i transfer this information to the diagram for the others you see the present state and next states are the same so the for the next three inputs this is going to, in present state, is going to come back to itself as a next state. So when it is 0, 1, it's going to come back to itself. When it is 0, 1, my output is 0. When my input is 1, 0, once again, my output is 0. So similar to this one. And when both of them 1, my next state is 1, but output is 1. So here, 1, 1, output 1. So this is the state diagram now. What does this mean at that stage? What we have done at that stage is that from the word description, we move to... Uh, uh, state diagram model state diagram model so when you say model that means this state diagram determines exactly what this circuit does so forget now this circuit we can consider this one so now imagine in your mind what a sequential circuit includes. It includes memory elements, it includes a combination circuit. So how many memory elements do we need? Since there is one state variable, so one memory element. So I know I'm going to use one memory element. Okay. So the second part is the combination circuit. Combination circuit includes, uh, so that means after we determine the memory element, what is left to design the combination circuit. So we've got to know the design of a com combination circuit. We've got to find the Boolean functions and corresponding minimum functions, then go to combination circuit uh, synthesis. We have seen it already. So which functions do we need in order to set up this combination circuit? There are two type of outputs from the 
combination circuit. One of them is the Z output, Z output function, and the other two is the memory elements input variables. So assume that we use the SR memory element. So memory element SR um, memory inputs, let's say, memory inputs. So we are going to go determine these two because these two group, you can consider as group, group one and group two. In this group, we've got combination circuits. So this combination circuit means Z output is going to be function of X1, X2, and small y. These are the independent variables, aren't they? X1, X2, and small y is independent variable. We're going to determine these functions as well, X1, X2, and y. Function of this function let's say this is another function so f so there are two of those anyway okay so can we find these functions just by looking at the state diagram the answer is no you cannot see that how are you going to see this function you need the mathematical model mathematical model so i've got to transfer this state diagram once i've got a model i can find the other model in the um, analysis, we, uh, we were writing mathematical model first, end up with the state diagram. Now this one is the opposite. We are drawing the state diagram first and then uh, find the mathematical model. The reason why we are transferring the mathematical model means I'm going to be able to write these functions. Let's do this operation now. So my independent variables are x1, x2, and small y. And my output functions are my functions that I uh, that I need for a mathematical model, output function, and the next state function. So this means left hand side here is independent variables and the right hand side is the dependent variables. So how many different inputs that you're going to have? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and then 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. one eight different inputs that you could apply to this circuit. So what is the output function? So output function is going to be written in here. It is given here, isn't it? These are x1, x2. That means these are the independent variables, x1 and x2. That is small y, and that is z. So I'm going to, since the input uh, independent variables are known, so you can go to Z. So let me write it here. I would like to just remind you that's going to be summation, sum value. And that's going to be next state. That means carry, isn't it? So you can easily write this out. So sum is 0, carry is 0. Sum is 1, carry is 0. Sum is 1, carry is 0. Sum is 0, carry is 1. For this one, sum is 1, carry is 0. For this input, sum is 0, carry 1. Sum 0, carry 1. And this one, sum 1, and carry is also 1. So that is the mathematical model this now mathematical model so what I need we said we need memory element since there's just one element this memory element input functions that I need so that means in this case I need this inverse definition relation 
this one. Because if you look at this mathematical model now, we know the present state. Let me show it here. We know this present state. And we know the next state. So, put it in a box here. That one. We know this small y, which is this. And we know the next state, which is this. So this present state and next state is related with my memory element, SR memory element. So I know this present state, next state. Question is, can I find out S and R memory element input functions? So these are the functions that I am looking for to find S R. So I'm going to write these functions by using this inverse definition relation. So let's do it now. The first row here, uh, these uh, green columns I'm going to compare. Present state 0, next state 0. Present state 0, next state 0. Input is 0, k, isn't it? So I'm going to write 0, k. So the second line, once again, we are looking for this small y and capital Y. Don't look at the other columns. You are dealing with this one, present state, next state. So it is the same, so 0k is my input. And third line, 0, 0, once again, my input values are this. And the fourth line here, 0, 1 change, 0, 1 change is 1, 0. Input is 1, 0, isn't it? So fifth line here, 1, 0, 1, 0 change from present to next. My input should be 0, 1. So 0, 1 here. So uh, that's the fifth. So that's the se uh, uh, sixth line. 1, 1, 1, 1, present state, and uh, next state 1 is this case. Input is k0, k0. That k is, don't care, isn't it? k, don't care. OK. That is the seventh line here, 1, 1, once again, k0. And 1, 1, once more again, so k0. So I found the memory element input functions as well. So what I'm going to do next is I need all the functions that I'm going to design. I found all the functions that I'm going to design, as I already said. Then if I find the corresponding minimal functions for these variables, then I can draw the circuit, sequential circuit, as a result of synthesis. So in order to find the minimal functions, we've got to transfer these functions, Z, S, and R functions, to a kernel map. So let's do this now. So kernel map for the Z function, kernel map for the S function and also kernel map for the R function. So put this, 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 and this, 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 and this. So inputs are going to be, and now this is independent variables, x1 and x2, and that's small y, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So this is z function, 
this is s function and this is r function so that means i'm going to transfer these three functions to the kernel maps so in order to do this we can fill up three different function values for any given input so look at this line here the first line it says uh, input are zero zero present state zero input are zero zero and small y is zero what is the output function and what is s function what is the r function so zero zero k isn't it so to that uh, cell that is that cell this is the cell and that's that cell so I'm going to write I said z value s value r value to those sets to, to those cells so 0 0 k second line 1 0 k second line is 0 0 1 isn't it 0 0 1 0 0 1 uh, second line 1 0 k 1 0 k so third line now this one now 0 1 0 so that's that column isn't it so my z values are 1 0 k okay then 1 0 Okay, and this fourth one now, 0, 1, 1, this is that cell. So my values are 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. So this is y, small y equal, that is small y equal to 1 so that means this row isn't it this row small y equal to 1 this row so you're going to apply these inputs these are the inputs so for this one make it different color for this one here one my output is 1 0 1 so I'm writing now 1 0 1 and the second line, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. So that is the um, cell. So my values are 0, k, 0, 0, k, 0. Third one is this input. So that is 1, 1, 0. So that means that column. So my values are 0, k, 0, 0, k, 0. So the last one is all of them 1. This is that cell. So my values are 1, k, 0, 1, k, 0. So I found now that the three functions, Boolean functions, that I, I am going to design. So let me see the next step. So this uh, kernel maps are shown in the next step here. So the function zero values has not been shown here. Only the function equal to one and k's are included here. So if you choose that k equal to one, your next state function is going to so your uh, memory element s input function is going to be this x1 and x2 so for z uh, r case so if you choose that k equal to 1 the other k is equal to 0 so it's going to be this uh, product term which is x1 prime x2 prime and we said this there is an there is uh, not easy to check but this is a x or gate 3 input x or gate this is if you choose the all the k is zero, you get this. 
Now, once you've got this, then we can draw the sequential circuit that we need. So we said we are going to have just one memory element, one memory element, and input functions of these memory elements we have just found. And I'm going to find the Z output function. So you, you see here Z output function. So it says it's going to be an XOR gate. XOR gate means, oh, okay. So, oh, no, no, let me. So this is a gate, three input gate, and this is an XOR gate, so two parallel lines here. So what we've got, we've got, oh no, just make it a bit nice looking case. So one of them is going to be X1, the other one is going to be X2, and the third one is going to be this one that is present state small y isn't it small y x1 x2 x or gate output is z z so my inputs are x1 and x2 so we have found one of them the others this is a end gate. This is another end gate. So I've got two, two input end gates for the inputs S and R. S and R. So I've got one and end gate here, two inputs, and another end gate here with two inputs. So this one x1 multiplied x2. So that's going to be this one. And that is going to be the second one here. Okay. That is X1. X2. So this one is going to be X pri X1 prime, X2 prime. So it's going to be 1 not gate here, another not gate here, and that is going to be this. That is X1, and that is X2. So I put this connection just to remind you, these are connections. So what we had got at the output, X1 prime here, x2 prime here. So this is x1 prime multiplied x2 prime. So that's the end of the synthesis. Why is that? Now what we have done, we've got a box here. This box is this. Okay. That is serial letter. Serial letter. At the beginning, we said, let's come back to the other. Now we were, we were in a position where description we start with, and we ask for what is inside. So conclusion is what is inside. So what it does, it does finds the summation of x1 and x2. So that is synthesis. End of this video as well.